What's up everybody? So buying or selling real estate in Mexico. What are closing costs in Mexico? How much are they? What is the time span? You know, today I'm gonna to be talking with Eduardo Tapia. Eduardo is head of the Bar Association for Baja California Sur. Really good friend of mine, he's trustworthy. He's the attorney, he's my go-to for anything legal in Cabo. And uh, he's gonna talk about how he can help you with closing costs, with real estate, what to expect, and really how much you will be paying. So let's get right into it. All right, Eduardo, how many closings have you done in general in your career? Well, uh, I could probably divide that uh, answer in two. I started doing closings when I was actually in law school as a law clerk in Mexico City. So this is a good, you know, 25 years now. And then from uh, that point on, after finishing law school and coming over here to Cabo 20 years ago, we continued down that path regarding real estate matters. And so I would have to say I've done, you know, over, uh, you know, 200 closings uh, through my tenure, both as in-house counsel for real estate developments here, as well as now uh, with my firm since 2008 going forward up till today. And so that's more or less what I've been able to do. Okay. Um, what parts of Mexico have you done closings? Um, and for example, you are based in Los Cabos, obviously, but um, if somebody wanted you to handle a closing in Puerto Vallarta, could you handle that? Actually, yes. Uh, the good thing about uh, Mexican attorneys is the fact that we are licensed nationally. So there's not actually um, individual you know, registry that you have to go to comport regarding licensing requirements. Having said that, I have been able to do closings elsewhere. For example, right now I just closed a deal in Puerto Vallarta that I've done in, in the state of Quintana Roo, where the Cancun, Playa del Carmen areas are, are located, Acapulco, Chihuahua, Tijuana, Coahuila, Mexico City, state of Mexico. So basically, I'm guessing I've covered probably around 15 states uh, within Mexico. Uh, but it's funny that I've not been able to do like a real estate closing in the states being licensed in New York, for example. But that's something I guess on my to do list. All right. So here's the big question. What are the costs associated with closing real estate in Mexico? Well, traditionally in Mexico, what normally is computed for the expenses on the buyer side are the traditional closing costs. In Mexico, that's the party that's going to be responsible for picking up the majority of the closing costs rather than the seller. So the closing costs in Mexico are comprised of both state or local and federal taxes. The bulk of the transaction is local because civil law under constitutional provisions in Mexico require that it to be under the civil code for the state. But the majority of the costs are divided into the state tax, which is a 2% transfer of title tax uh, for that part. That is normally the bulk of that. The 2% is hinged upon three values. One is the commercial or the appraised value of the property. The second is what we call the land tax records office assessment, which is normally a, or historically a low figure, and that's the 2% or the traditionally or, con or the conventionally agreed upon purchase price. Out of the three, whichever the highest is that the number for the appraised value or the land tax records office value or the agreed upon price, that's what you do uh, to get the payment for the 2%. From there, it goes to the notary fees, which depending on the transaction, that's how it hinges upon the different schedule of fees for the notary. Then you have the public property registry fees that also hinge upon the value. With that said, there's actually a way to alleviate the cost of the particular you know, uh, public property registry fee because it's, it should be just a due. So it really doesn't matter what the amount of the purchase price is because that's a clerical thing that the property records have to show. So it's really the same thing if you have a $10 million property or a $100,000 property, the actual item of recording these things down is basically the same. So after the property registry fees, the transfer title tax, you have the trustee fees, uh, depending on if you have you know, foreign ownership, which is a requirement to be under the trust. So if it's in mainland Mexico, which is 30 miles away from the coastline or 50 miles from the border, you do not need a trust. So that saves you the maybe around 400, 450 per 
uh, transaction of acceptance of the trustee fees. And then you have a 450 uh, per annum administration fee for the trust. And normally the trust are requiring two years in advance. So that's part of the cost that you need to have associated with the trust, plus around $1,500, probably less, depending on what bank you're using to get the permit from the Foreign Ministry of Foreign Relations. And that's also handled by the banks through a third party that is retained out of Mexico City by the banks to get the permit from the Ministry of Foreign Relations. So with that, then you have the notary fees, and basically with that, you obviously have the legal fees associated with the, with the transfer. Traditionally, the legal fees are, uh, it can be per, hour, per hourly rate, or also a bulk of that goes to a capped fee. So I've done you know several arrangements where it's hourly or a bulk of that. And then finally, for closing cost, you have to, if your seller's counsel be, uh, well, not worried about, you have to obviously pay, but the amount to be paying for the capital gains tax or income tax uh, regarding the sale, and that's a federal tax, uh, impuesto sobre la renta. So that income tax gets paid through the notary public. As you know, in Mexico, Fletcher, the notary public is a licensed attorney that's bonded by the state, but we have public faith, what we call it, so it has to be uh, through the notary, and we get those payments out. So that's, I guess, in a, a broad uh, spectrum of the closing cost. I've traditionally heard people describe closing costs as five to seven percent of the property value. Is that something that you would say is accurate? And if so, this is usually going to be generally higher than a closing cost in the United States, correct? Uh, yes, as far as percentages go, uh, I do not believe that's accurate as far as a percentage. I believe it's more you know, closer to, to a 3% to a 4% probably, and also depending on the value. So obviously the higher the value of the transaction, you know, you have a percentage that is going to be a bit on the lower side. But yes, closing costs are substantial in Mexico because you have to have the, the use. We do not have title companies in Mexico to carry out the transfer of titles, but rather we use a notary public that is basically the only person charged under constitutional provisions and civil code provisions. And there's actually a specialty law called notary laws. And it's a licensed attorney, it's bonded, and they are grouped together in certain uh, areas, in this case, every state has you know, a set number of notaries, and it depends on the population of the state. For example, in the state of Baja California, so we have 31, 32 notary publics, and they will be increasing probably this year in 2021. Uh, that's normally when the governor in, uh, in function is going to exit the office, and that's when they kind of do a, after the census, we just had a census in 2020, so they're going to say, okay, we're going to need more notaries throughout the state. All right. Um, and obviously when you factor in uh, property taxes and things like this, I've heard people describe as Mexico does it right. So you're paying more in the closing costs up front, but over time you're going to be paying less when you factor in property taxes, right? Especially when you look at states like Illinois that have like a 3% property tax. So is it fair to say that uh, even though you're higher closing costs in the beginning are going to be offset by lower property taxes in future years? Well, exactly. The carrying costs in Mexico are substantially lower than in the States. With that said, yeah, you do have to have the bulk of payment up front, but then the carrying costs are much lower as far as property taxes. It's, you know, it's really a nominal amount if you compare it to the States. And with that said, and you did mention a couple of things regarding property taxes, there was a couple of two, you know, a couple of items that I did mention regarding closing costs. One is what we call the certificate of no property tax liability, which is a certificate basically stating that the property taxes are current. Uh, you also have to take into account a certificate of no liens that is issued by the public property registry. Those are nominal costs, uh, and obviously that part of what. Uh, the legal counsel does, you know, obtain those documents and do uh, a title search. Also, there is sometimes the the need or the ease of having title insurance in place. It's it's more of a recent development. I, I say recent, you know, from maybe 15 years uh, to today. And that title insurance is also pricey, but it also depends on the requirements of a lender. If there's a lender in place, they normally are accustomed to getting title insurance. And so that's also a cost that can be uh, important. It just depends on the development. It depends on the actual status of title. Uh, so if there are several things that are going on that you do not 
feel, feel comfortable with the property, then you might go the route of having that title insurance in place uh, to pick up any of those contingencies. All right, and um, let's say somebody from the states who's used to quick closings and whatnot, let's say they, they pay cash for the property, all the paperwork's in order, what could you expect as a normal amount of time for a closing to process? That's a good question, Fletcher. And basically, uh, we do not have the same uh, time frames that in the States uh, they're accustomed to simply because of the amount of paperwork that is involved essentially with the trustees. Trustees take a long time simply because they have to comport to rules and regulations that have been enacted through the years regarding anti-money you know, laundering provisions. And so they have to have a lot of paperwork in place in order to, for them to finally get their committee to approve you know, of the certain entrusted properties. So with the whole process in place, we're looking at three months. Even though you're paying cash, even though you have everything ready to go, there are certain procedures that are in place. Also, out of the time frame, probably the majority of time in, that is consumed, other than the review of documents and the purchase and sale deed and whatnot, is also the fact of having to wait for the Ministry of Foreign Relations to issue the permit. And that's also taking probably around a month, just that, uh, even though we can try to push it. Uh, it's been my experience that they have their times down. And now with, uh, with certain health contingencies in place, they have to have an appointment, so it's taken a little bit more time. But yeah, that's, that's a safe assessment as far as a, a time closing. Three months, I've had it uh, probably the fastest one, maybe two months, uh, but that's also if it's only Mexican nationals involved, whether it be an entity or person, we do not need the trustees. So that sometimes uh, it, it serves for a quicker transfer. All right, and um, last, if somebody's buying a property here and they want somebody that they can trust um, to conduct their closing, would you be open to doing that? And how would somebody get in touch with you for that? Sure, obviously that's my cup of tea, and obviously they can uh, contact me through a website, uh, www.jetslaw.com, that's J-E-T-Z-L-A-W.com, and I can also be found in uh, the bar, Mexican Bar Associations, which are, I'm, I'm the chapter president, so uh, via email is good, info at jetslaw.com, and I'd be glad to, uh, to take into consideration any of the requests that might be posed by any viewers of this uh, segment. Thank <laughs> you.